Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're featuring the cheapest guitar I've ever featured on the channel. This is from Glary. Let's open it up, see if it's any good. Now you guys know I love to mix it up on the channel. I love to feature super high-end guitars hand-built from some of the world's best luthiers, but I also love to do low-end guitar shootouts and demos. And of course I've featured Yamaha, Squire, Monoprice, Firefly, Harley Benton, Epiphone, all these brands. Uh, but we've got a new one today and this one makes all those other brands seem pretty expensive. This is Glary and these guys pretty much make the cheapest guitars on planet earth. They're very very affordable. The model I have here I think is somewhere around 80 bucks. So let's open it up and see what you get. All right so here's what's in the box when you buy a Glary. Number one you actually get a gig bag. A little bit of a surprise when you're talking about guitars so expensive. So many guitars um, in this price range and all the way up to, you know, a couple hundred bucks, you're not guaranteed to get anything. So, I mean, there's no padding in it. It's basically just a convenient way to carry the guitar. If you drop it or you bump it, there's zero protection, but keeps the dust off and gives you an easy way to carry the guitar. So that's a nice touch. You also get uh, some tools here and a very very inexpensive looking cable but I suppose it gets you started and of course a guitar and here's what we got boom T style in this <laughs> pretty fun blue burst black on the back black all the way around the edges and a really cool blue burst so we're going to check this out in great detail I think I'm going to do a tear down too so we'll do some tones for you guys talk about the features and I think I want to pull it apart and just see what you know what you get for the price so anyway let's jump in and check it out now one of the first things I noticed about the Glary is this guitar is incredibly incredibly light which is not always the case when you're talking about like bargain basement brands and there's actually specs for this guitar on the Glary website which again you know sometimes when you're talking about super cheap instruments you're left guessing as to you know what it is you actually have so we've got a basswood body and a maple neck there is no skunk stripe on the neck so the truss rod was put in first and then the maple fingerboard was put on top of the maple neck so basswood and maple incredibly light now on the website it says this guitar will be 5.9 pounds less than six pounds so I wanted to see if that was true or not so I threw it on the scale and this model here was just over five and a half pounds incredibly light so if that's important to you um, yeah really great that this thing is super light so here's a shot of the front face of the headstock and as you guys can see it's branded Glary now personally I like to think that the company was started by Glenn and Larry and they're like dude it's got to be Glary such a nice ring to it uh, not really that's a weird name but it is what it is and as you guys can see the logo is a note with wings and sort of a drop shadow not my favorite but again it is what it is a very inexpensive guitar uh, but that's just a look at the shape and the branding on the headstock so here's a look at the back of the headstock and of course we've got unbranded tuning machines we can't really expect anything else in this price range and of course I haven't removed the stickers but we've got six inline unbranded tuning machines they are not staggered in height which means we've got two string trees which can affect the tuning uh, we don't obviously have a trim system on this guitar so shouldn't be a big deal truss rod adjustment right here and the nut now when we take a close look at the nut you can actually see there's a gap where they cut it so the slot is a little bit too wide now the nut doesn't move so it's glued in properly but you know it's not super precise and of course it's made out of cheap plastic so again we'll see if it holds tune other than that 22 frets maple fingerboard nice satin finish I've got to say very smooth and the grain is actually surprisingly straight too so not bad on the neck especially for the price man that's incredible so anyway traditional tele block there and on the front side as I mentioned we're going to tear it all apart take a look at the pickups the electronics see what we have but there is one thing to note check this out it's a top loaded tele bridge so I don't know if you guys noticed but when I showed you the back of the guitar there is no place to put your strings through like a traditional tele because it's top loaded so interesting 
Now we do have an ashtray bridge, which is a really nice touch, gives it a little bit of a vintage vibe. And of course, top hat knob, volume and tone. Again, we'll pull it all, all apart and check out the electronics. But I mean, overall, like look at the grain. Decent grain in there too. So overall, this is a pretty nice package. So let's plug it in, check out some tones, and then of course we'll do our teardown, check out exactly what we have in terms of the pickups, electronics, but overall 22 frets, fret ends are pretty rough. <laughs> Again, as you would expect, no filing on the edges, but I do have to say there is a little bevel on the edges. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. Maybe it'll take a close-up shot, but there is a little bevel, which makes you know it a little bit more comfortable. So, you know, fret works a little gritty, of course, as you would expect in this price range, but overall, a pretty beautiful looking guitar. Let's plug it in and check out some tones. All right, so I've got the Glary plugged in. Now I should quickly mention, this is straight out of the box. Haven't adjusted, you know, the intonation, the action. I haven't even removed the stickers off the guards. So we're just gonna see what this thing sounds like, you know, straight out of the box. Now I should mention changing the strings on inexpensive guitars is super important because, you know, whatever crap they put on here, not gonna do you any favors in terms of tuning stability or tone. So that's the first thing to, to mention. And if you're gonna spend, you know, 75, 85 bucks on a guitar, putting some good strings on it, you know, is not gonna break the budget. So anyway, let's just check out some tones. Uh, we'll just go through the pickup uh, positions with some basic chords. Here we go. Now the first thing that I notice is there is a massive difference between the neck pickup and the bridge. The bridge seems almost like super plunky and I think that's you know partly due to like the top loading bridge uh, but like I mentioned you know changing the strings might help too. But yeah massive difference between the neck So that's the first thing I noticed, but let's just check out some of that, that twang if I just use my fingers. So I think I like that twang better with my fingers than if I kind of go to the back of that bridge. It seems like almost too attacky, I don't know. certainly has a lot of sizzle back there. Let's uh, try adding a little gain here. Go to the bridge here, or sorry, the neck. Super warm and creamy tone there, uh, both on together in the middle. bridge yeah so with some light overdrive you definitely still hear you know some of those differences uh, but overall there's some good tones to be had here um, yeah let's try maybe with a little higher gain Okay, so first of all, I don't hate this neck pickup. I think that sounds actually really nice. Nothing wrong with that, but 
this bridge pickup is definitely microphonic. It's picking up a ton of crap. So I think that's why when I was playing clean, I was like, there's some sort of weird attack plunky kind of thing going on. I think it's because this back pickup is so microphonic. So if you play with a lot of gain, be prepared for a lot of extra noise. Um, yeah, and squealing uh, pickups and all that kind of stuff. Um, as I mentioned, I think this neck pickup sounds really nice, like nice creamy tone. <laughs> All right, you guys, I've got the strings off. They went straight in the trash. Let's pull the neck off and check out what we got there. Okay, so let's set these guys aside. Take a look at the neck and the neck pocket. Now there is like a little hole here for like <laughs> the micro tilt adjustment <laughs> on a fender. Not sure why it's there on the glary because there is nothing on the back of the neck, save for a little stamp, which I can't really read. But anyway, here's what it looks like. You know, surprisingly clean and stuff, nothing too crazy there. I guess you can see the grain. Let's give you guys a few shots of it. You know, overall pretty clean for like, you know, an $80 guitar, not too bad at all. So there it is, you know, just pretty squared off and stuff, but yeah. Good old maple neck can't really screw that up too bad and as i mentioned like the grain on the neck is actually pretty straight too so happy about that and here you can really see uh, the two pieces so you've got your your base maple then they install the truss rod and then the fingerboard goes on as a separate piece so no worries with that and yeah other than that as i mentioned you know the fretwork's not impeccable but that can easily be buffed out which you know I'll probably do. So anyway, that's kind of like a look at the neck and, and the pocket. Nothing too crazy. Let's flip the body over and check there. Just kind of pissing sawdust everywhere, but other than that. So here we go. There it is. Nice clean lines. I think I'll remove the, the sticker and stuff. Again, not sure why that is there, like that hole in the, in the heel, but it is. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, let's pull off the pick guard and take a look at the pickups and the electronics. All right, so let's take a peek under the pick guard and see what this $80 guitar gets you. Oops, I forgot one screw right here. There we go. Okay, so. Oh, okay. I guess that's not, uh, that shouldn't be surprising. Okay, so this is a ceramic bar magnet, which is probably why I like that neck pickup because, you know, I don't mind the super cheap ceramic bar magnets. They give a very, very warm tone, especially on a single coil. And that probably explains why there's such a big difference between the neck and the bridge. Although we'll check out the bridge in a second. So yes, just a ceramic magnet glued to the bottom of the pickup. And check this out. This is actually routed for a humbucker. Nice little touch. So if you do want to, you know, mod it in the future, humbucker will easily fit in here. Just have to buy a new pick guard. And it's actually painted. It doesn't look shielded at all, <laughs> but it does have a super deep route, um, which should, you know, accommodate a humbucker. No problems at all. All right, so let's keep moving on here. Put that back there and put the screws together. Okay, so let's check out the control cavity here. Okay, so I'll let you guys uh, take a peek at that. Uh, Soldering is not the, the cleanest I've ever seen. And of course, we've got dime sized pots that are, they're not unbranded, but they're not alpha. I don't know what they are. One looks like it's stamped F. Something like that. So yeah, pretty cheap, you know, <laughs> very basic kind of stuff. Uh, again, there is no shielding in the cavity. So, you know, just using some shielding paint or some foil or something like that would make all the difference in the world. And another thing I just noticed here is a little bit of uh, <laughs> the finished chipped or something like that. Not exactly sure what's going on there. 
Well, maybe it's a ground wire. Hang on a second. Let me grab, uh, see if I can grab it here. Nope. <laughs> Don't know what that is, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's just a little bit of a surprise under there. Thankfully, you don't see it at all once, you know, the guitar is put back together. But something to note, let's check out the bridge. I'm going to pull that off as well. And let's check out that other pickup. Okay, let's see if there's any surprises under here. Nice deep route again. And it is a ceramic tele pickup. So... Hopefully, I'll see if I can get that right in focus for you guys. Uh, interesting design because you've got like the T-style pickup here and then normally the base plate goes right on there. But here you can see there is a bar magnet right there. So you've got two ceramic uh, pickups. And as I mentioned, this one is pretty, you know, microphonic. So swapping this out to, you know, maybe like a Fender made in Mexico or whatever you can pick up cheap would still be an upgrade over this one. But other than that, you know, all the routes and stuff look really clean. Uh, they're just not shielded and there is no shielding wire. Sometimes on tellies, if you guys have had them apart, you'll know there's a little wire that comes up here and that, uh, you know, grounds the bridge, I guess. Now, one thing I should also mention before I put it back together is this neck joint is actually very, very tight. So there's zero play in this neck joint and I've, you know, seen a lot worse on a lot more expensive guitars. So I should just mention that fits very, very nice and tight. There we go. And you know, the screws that bolt on the neck are also like super beefy compared to like a fender or something like that. So just thought I'd mention that the neck joint is actually really good. So here are my final thoughts on the Glary. Should you actually buy one? Well, if you don't have a T-style guitar, absolutely. If you don't have an S-style guitar, they sell like $75 strats. That's like half the price of an Affinity. You know, crazy stuff. Now, you're not gonna end up with a perfect guitar at this price. There might be, you know, little things you need to fix. Like here, my bridge pickup works just fine, but if you play with gain, you're really gonna notice how, you know, microphonic that pickup is and it's gonna squeal. Um, so I always say like, if you're an experienced player, build a kit or buy a cheap guitar because it's the perfect platform for learning things like replacing a pickup or setting your intonation or, you know, crowning and buffing your frets, that kind of stuff, replacing a pot, all those things. Um, it really helps you understand the guitar better. And if you're a new player, this thing plays really nice, much, much better than the guitar I learned on. So I like the flat radius on these Glaries. Uh, I think it just enables um, you to have a little wiggle room in how it's all constructed. If you have like a more arched vintage radius, you have to be like really precise. So I like that it's a flatter radius, easier to play. Love satin neck and the neck profile, very, very nice, very comfortable. So uh, lots of things to love about the Glary. Mainly it's the price. And like I said, you're not maybe gonna be guaranteed a perfect instrument, but absolutely playable. And I think this looks great. Thanks so much for watching. I know a ton of you guys requested Daryl. Can you please check out a Glary? So I hope you guys enjoyed the demo. If there's other brands or other models you'd like me to check out, just leave it in the comments below. I'll check it out there. Other than that, all the gear I use, all my links and stuff will be down in the video description below. Have yourself a great day.